Alexander, this rivalry you can see here, how, how deep is this rivalry? How deep is this rivalry? <laughs> This man here is a professional liar. He could have had the fight. He could have had 12 to 15 million, probably 17 million with advertising, everything else. It could have been busy. And, and all of a sudden now, where is he? He's getting 6 million against Dubois. Well, it's, it's ridiculous because he knows when he meets a gypsy king, it's over for him. John Fury has reportedly snapped at Alexander Usyk in a heated confrontation ahead of his fight with Tyson Fury. The initial clash in May delivered a thrilling razor-close contest. Both fighters had their shining moments, with Fury showcasing sharp footwork and effective movement in the early stages while landing crisp uppercuts during the middle rounds to assert his presence. By the ninth round, Fury acknowledged that he grew a bit too confident, leaving himself open to a heavy punch that drove him back onto the ropes, prompting the referee to issue a standing eight count. Fury endured the full duration of the fight but narrowly fell short on points, marking the first defeat of his professional career. However, many remain confident that he has the potential to bounce back and claim victory in the rematch. Since that moment, Fury's corner has faced scrutiny, with coaches Sugar Hill Stewart, Andy Lee, and his father, Big John Fury, appearing to deliver conflicting advice on how to navigate the crucial closing rounds. Former world champion Carl Frotch, on his channel Frotch on Fighting, has offered offered some candid advice. He believes Tyson Fury's father should steer clear of the boxing ring. To be honest, I hope he doesn't rear his head again. Big John Fury, the fighting man. Under <laughs> on the hard road. That man has gone. He's vanished. I've got no material. I've got no Big John material. But listen, Tyson probably knows that actually, listen, Dad, he's probably had the conversation with him. Listen, Dad, I love you to bits. I know you've got my best will. You, you want, you've got your best intentions at heart. You want me to win, you want me to do the business. But do me a favour, stay out of the way. Shut the f up, he's probably been a little bit more, more polite than that. Frotch expressed his hope that John would not make another appearance, emphasising that he had seemingly vanished. He speculated that Tyson Fury was likely aware of this and might have conveyed to his father that despite his love and acknowledgement of his good intentions, it would be best for him to stay out of the way and remain silent. Frotch remarked that John's presence in the ring was unnecessary and added that he would be surprised if John reappeared during fight week. He highlighted the expertise of Sugar Hill and Andy Lee, who had extensive experience at the world level and hoped that John would maintain his distance and allow the professional trainers to handle the task. They don't need big John Fury in the ring, do they? They don't need him there. So if he surfaces his head fight week, I'll be shocked. If he's in the corner, I mean, you've got Andy Lee and Sugar Hill, two very experienced guys at world level who know the game inside out. You don't need big John Fury in the corner. You don't need him. So hopefully, Fury just sits back, keeps his mouth shut, watches his son and wills him on to win. Maybe he's in the camp, maybe he's helping him and just keeping his, just keeping the distance and letting the real trainers do the job. On another occasion, Carl Frotch reprimanded John and told Tyson to remove his father from his camp. The Brit told Action Network, the typical pathetic childish behavior from a grown man following John's disruption of Tommy Fury and Darren Till's pre-fight press conference. Frotch added, he did have a lot to say and he was very vocal, but at the end of the day, it's not about him, it's about Darren Till and Tommy Fury. So why is Big John Fury the fighting man getting involved? Involved. Why the f is he getting involved? Has he been sacked by Tyson Fury? Did Tyson tell him to do one? And now he's with Tommy Fury, trying to get some of the limelight? I don't know, but same old sh Darren Till totally wrote him off. Prior to his fight with Tommy on January 18, Fury Sr. threw water at the former UFC star. Till could be heard yelling, sit down, little John. Meanwhile, Tyson Fury has dropped a huge hint on whether his dad will be in his corner for his rematch with Alexander Usyk. Following his first ever split decision loss in May, the Gypsy King is attempting to reclaim his titles against Usyk on December 21st. However, his crowded corner, which was managed by Sugar Hill Stewart and included Fury's father John and aide Andy Lee, was attacked the last time. At 59, John drew particular criticism from pundits for loudly overshadowing head trainer Sugar Hill during the crucial 60-second corner interval. The heavyweight fighter is unfazed by claims that Fury needs a change of leadership. Fury said, Listen, people can have opinions and what they want to say, but at the end of the day, they're not in there doing the fighting. It's really unimportant what other people think of what was going on in my corner. If I'm happy, then the world's happy, and I'm happy. In the meantime, Usyk had to give up the IBF title in order to face Fury again in Riyadh. Daniel Dubois claimed the title after being promoted from interim champion status and delivered a stunning knockout against Anthony Joshua, 34, during his debut title defense. And Fury believes that in order to upset the unbeaten Usyk, he will need to put on a similar show. He said, There's no secret. I'm going in there to knock him out because I don't think I'm going to get a decision no matter what I do. So I have to take it out of the judge's hands. I believe I have to get him out of there.
On the other hand, Andy Lee, Tyson Fury's coach, acknowledged that the heavyweight had too many voices on his side when he lost to Oleksandr Usyk in May. Fury faced a decision loss to Usyk in Saudi Arabia, where the Ukrainians secured the title of undisputed heavyweight champion. Fury, narrowly avoiding a stoppage in the ninth round, drew criticism for the crowded lineup of coaches in his corner. At 36, Fury was guided by a trio of advisors, his father John, head trainer Sugar Hill Stewart, and Lee. However, John Fury faced sharp criticism, not only for his contentious advice, but also for headbutting a member of Usyk's team earlier in the week, a move that drew significant backlash. Lee told Boxing Scene, There was a lot of voices in the corner. We were in a dire situation and had to get him back to himself, pull him out of it. I was told, and I believed, he was two rounds down, so I had to speak up about that. His dad was giving him great advice, I thought, but he's also a dad, and that's his son. Do you know what I mean? He added, Sugar should have been the only voice, and listen, I think he will be the only voice in the next fight. But it shows Tyson trusts his team, that he doesn't want to change. Other guys would have looked for an excuse, blamed it on the team, but he's not changing his team. Hopefully it works out for him. Moreover, with their eagerly awaited rematch on the horizon, Tyson Fury and Oleksandr Usyk have exchanged sharp warnings, heightening the tension between the two champions. The combat sports world is abuzz with excitement, following the unveiling of a striking trailer that sets the stage for their epic showdown. Before the highly anticipated showdown, Turkey Alalshi, chairman of Saudi Arabia's General Entertainment Authority and renowned for delivering electrifying boxing spectacles, turned to X to unveil the promotional video for the Usyk vs. Fury clash. The trailer shows Fury and Usyk gripped by fear as they envision their opponent lurking at every turn, heightening the global anticipation for the upcoming fight. Fury then shared Alal Sheikh's post on X, sending a fierce warning to the Ukrainian with a bold message. Reignited Riyadh season, what a teaser before the main course. Usyk, I'm inevitable, be ready. However, Usyk warned Fury about their fight and posted the trailer to his Instagram account, writing, The time is almost here. See you in Riyadh, Tyson Fury. In a previous interview with TNT Sports, Fury declared his intention to destroy Usyk, saying, I'm gonna go in there with destroy mode. I'm not going for a points decision. I'm gonna knock him out. Although Tyson Fury has boldly claimed he will demolish Oleksandr Usyk in their upcoming rematch, many remain uncertain about Fury's chances of defeating Usyk. Moreover, Tyson Fury has denied reports that he cracked his nose in their undisputed title bout against Oleksandr Usyk. Although Usyk gained the advantage and put Fury in a difficult position during the ninth round of their first bout, sparking speculation about possible injuries, Fury has firmly rejected these rumors. There was nothing wrong with my nose, just a bit of blood, he told TNT Sports Boxing. He added, you get punched on the nose, your eyes water. It wasn't broken. With the rematch looming as the underdog, Fury remains unshaken, pointing to his proven ability to recover and triumph, with dominant victories over John McDermott, Derek Chisora, and Deontay Wilder as evidence. Embracing the challenge, he expressed excitement at the prospect of being viewed as the lesser fighter for the first time in over four years. Fury is brimming with confidence ahead of his rematch with Usyk. He reflected on their previous bout, saying, it was very close last time. I'll be a bit more focused, a lack of complacency, and I should do the job. Nothing drastic has to change, a bit more of the same, a bit more focused, and I will be victorious. Last time it wasn't my time to win, or God would have given me victory. I'm very happy Usyk got the decision. That was meant to be, and we're going to find out what is meant to be on December 21st. Fury acknowledged the personal growth that comes from such intense competition. I believe it's my time this time, and all things that happen, positive or negative, are lessons, and we must learn from these things as humans, boxers, fathers, and husbands. What we know is to go out there and knock each other out and put on a show for the paying customer. I hope you guys will enjoy this fight as much as I will. The excitement is palpable on Fury's social media as he revs up his followers for the upcoming clash. Four weeks to go to the biggest fight of the year, the biggest fighting in boxing, me and Usyk, and I'm coming in hot. I'm coming in hot. Get up. Can't wait. December 21st, the belts are going to be mine again. Get up. George Foreman, the oldest heavyweight world champion in history, had foreseen the outcome. Foreman said, Tyson Fury has met his match. All Usyk has to do is, if he's smart enough to win the first round, then the second round. Okay, maybe you can give up the fourth round, but then go back up and win another round. It gets to where he's not worried about anything other than winning it on points. He's a solid fighter. He can take a punch. Fury's in tough. So unless the judges are the best judges money can buy, Usyk should win. That is how things actually happen. How is the rematch going? At the time, Big George was questioned if a rematch would be any different. Sure, he said. Foreman said about a rematch. Sure, because Fury will know then that now he can lose. It makes for a different fight. How you train. How you get into shape. For real. Go back to the way Fury fought Vladimir Klitschko in 2015. He fought Klitschko to a standstill. And that's the way you've got to fight Usyk. On December 21st, Foreman's second prediction will be tested, but only for three of the four main heavyweight titles. Meanwhile, seasoned boxer Derek Chisora has expressed doubt over Tyson Fury's chances of reclaiming victory in his upcoming rematch against unified heavyweight champion Oleksandr Usyk. Chisora believes Tyson Fury won't come out on top against Oleksandr Usyk based on his current training approach. He 
claims Fury's sparring partners are more starstruck by the Gypsy King than truly challenging him in the ring. Meanwhile, Usyk is laser-focused, maintaining a relentless pace from start to finish in his preparations. Kazora highlights that Usyk has already proven he can trouble Fury, as evidenced during their clash on May 18th when he staggered him in the ninth round. This time, Usyk appears ready to double down on his power, setting the stage for an aggressive approach. The hitman motif he's adopted for the rematch sends a clear message. Usyk is intent on dismantling Fury and sealing the deal on December 21st at the Kingdom Arena in Riyadh. What Chisora fails to mention is the glaringly obvious. Tyson Fury has entered the realm of the ultra-wealthy, trading the raw hunger of his early career for the comforts of immense riches. With an estimated fortune of $140 million, poised to surpass $200 million after his highly anticipated rematch with Usyk, Fury stands among the richest boxers on the planet, a status that inevitably softens the edge that once defined him. His drive just isn't what it used to be. With only a month left until the fight, he's still out of shape, hoisting his trunks high to mask the telltale signs of a middle-aged paunch. Fury is aging, heavy, and no longer eager to endure the hardships that once defined him. The luxuries of newfound wealth have softened him. He's like a man who stumbled upon oil on his property, transformed, but not for the better, by the fortune that followed. Derek Chisora shared his doubts about Tyson Fury's ability to defeat Alexander Usyk in their rematch scheduled for December 21st. Speaking to Second Sout, Kisora expressed concerns about Fury's preparation, noting that the sparring partners in his camp seemed awed by him and were not challenging him enough to bring out his best. This lack of pressure, in Kazora's view, might hinder Fury's readiness to be a true menace in the fight. Do I believe Tyson can beat you, Alexander? I, I, look, at, I look at everybody he's got in his sparring camp. I personally don't believe that you can actually... <coughs> The sparring partners he's got right now, they're pushing him to be menace. You know, they 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 in all they are in all Tyson. Kazora elaborated further, stating that Fury's sparring partners appeared to be pulling their punches during training, which he believed could be detrimental to Fury's preparation. In contrast, he observed that Alexander Usyk seemed to be adopting a different approach, focusing on starting fast and finishing fast. Kazora noted that Usyk, now confident he could hurt Fury, was likely to be relentless in his attack. While expressing his hope for Fury to win, Chisora admitted that, based on what he was seeing, the odds were not in Fury's favor. You know, they will pull their punches when they're sparring, you know, they will, I can, this is what I'm seeing from, from the things I see on Instagram. So, I mean, what I see, what Alexander's doing, is totally different to what, well, because I think Alexander is way, is more like, start fast and finish fast. He knows he can hurt him now. So he's going to come and try and hurt him. You will not, as he keeps saying, you won't leave him alone. I would love Tyson to win. But right now, those odds are not looking great. Few men are better positioned to deliver a prediction on Alexander Usyk versus Tyson Fury II than Fabio Wardley, the reigning British and Commonwealth heavyweight champion who has shared the ring with both fighters on his journey to the summit, is certain about who will emerge victorious when they clash again this month. He told Boxing Social, I think it's a lot of the same, to be honest. I think Usyk will go into the fight with the mindset, like he has done with all of his fights, that just narrow focus, straight on target, on point, not missing the beat, not missing the step. Maybe Fury will say that his camp wasn't ideal or he wasn't in the best place or the best shape or whichever else who who knows but if i was to put money on it i'd say it goes pretty much the same way in may Usyk delivered a landmark victory by handing fury the first defeat of his professional career securing a split decision and forcing a standing eight count on his rival along the way he accomplished this making him the first heavyweight champion of the four belt period to go undefeated when fury and Usyk face off again next month the stakes will be slightly diminished the ukrainian fighter will no longer hold all four four major sanctioning body titles, as the IBF has stripped him of its belt. Fury has promised his supporters a knockout, and it is anticipated that he would take a more aggressive stance in the rematch. Andy Lee, the coach of the Mancunian fighter, revealed that Fury couldn't engage in proper sparring before his last bout with Usyk due to a cut above his right eye sustained ahead of their originally scheduled clash. This development might significantly influence the dynamics of their next showdown. Lee told TalkSport, It was a close fight. I thought it could have been a draw, but I had no arguments with Usyk getting the decision. Decision. Fights are won and lost in the ring, but also in training and preparation. Because of the rearranged date because of the cut, Tyson couldn't spar. The conditioning and sharpness it took away, and his ability to concentrate and stay ready and sustain attacks. He further added, when Tyson would have success, he would have to ease off and back away and build up his energy again before moving on. In the meantime, it encouraged Usyk to come forward and gave him the emphasis to take it because he was taking a break. He maintains that a third battle will be required to determine who is truly the best if Fury prevails in their rematch. However, 
However, should Usyk emerge victorious, his manager maintains that the sole remaining challenge for him would be a rematch with Daniel Dubois, the newly crowned IBF heavyweight champion. Klimas told Boxing King Media, Would we set up a fight with Dubois if Usyk beats Fury? Absolutely. I don't think anyone else is left in the heavyweight division. Right now, Daniel Dubois is the IBF champion. After a shot that split the media and supporters, Usyk stopped Dubois in August. There were conflicting views on the punch that sent Usyk to the canvas for several minutes. Some argued it was a legitimate strike that deserved to be counted, while others maintained it landed below the belt. The referee ruled the strike as illegal, granting Usyk four minutes to recover. Once he regained his composure, he returned to the ring and delivered a decisive jab that knocked Dubois out in the ninth round. Klimas added, Many people discussed the first fight, claiming it wasn't a low blow, but it undoubtedly was. The referee gave us recovery time, and I believe any smart fighter would use that chance. For many, this raised questions, and for Alexander, a fight with Dubois after Fury would be the ideal opportunity to show he can beat him and become the undisputed heavyweight champion a second time. In an interview with TNT Sports Boxing, former undisputed cruiserweight champion Usyk was asked about Tyson Fury's punching power while reviewing their first fight. He quickly dismissed the question, even after watching Fury's devastating uppercut in round six. He said, No feel. Usyk did commend Fury's work to the body, admitting that in the heat of the moment, he kept reminding himself to move, move, move. He remains confident in his ability to withstand the Brit's best, asserting that the idea of him being knocked out is nothing more than a fantasy. Fury has consistently demonstrated his versatility in the ring, proving time and again that he can triumph through various strategies. His impressive 2015 victory over Vladimir Klitschko in Germany marked a defining moment in his career, securing the world title on points. However, Fury has also showcased his power, knocking out Deontay Wilder with relentless heavy punches in two out of their three encounters. He further cemented his reputation by stopping Dillian White with a single, unforgettable uppercut at Wembley. The way he chooses to tackle this rematch is what adds to its intrigue, and the victor may set their sights on an undisputed showdown with Dubois or opt to settle things with a trilogy. Meanwhile, it appears that Tyson Fury's decision to gain weight in front of his boxing rematch with Alexander Usyk next month is a mistake. Former boxing champion Duke McKenzie believes it would be a mistake for the Gypsy King to add extra weight as he prepares to face his rival again and seek revenge for his loss earlier this year. Fury has hinted at plans to add more muscle for the upcoming rematch, with the 36-year-old making it clear that he's aiming for a knockout. However, McKenzie, speaking on TalkSport, has cautioned the veteran not to rely on that strategy, emphasizing that it won't pose a real challenge to Usyk. McKenzie said, Fury doesn't live, eat, walk, talk the sport, but you're supposed to. In between fights is where fights are won and lost. We know Fury blows up, puts on a load of weight between fights, and then he has got to get rid of all that weight again. Now, they're trying to tell us that Fury is going to be bigger and better. Bigger and better isn't going to beat Usyk. It's really not. He further added, if he puts on more weight and thinks to himself, I'm going to bully Usyk this time. I'm going to go in and walk him down. I'll be able to take his shots because I'm that much bigger. It's not going to work for him. He's going to be slower. He's going to be more predictable. He's going to get hit more and a lot sooner. McKenzie expressed confidence that Alexander Usyk would win the rematch, asserting that he could not envision a scenario where Tyson Fury could defeat him. He dismissed the possibility of Fury knocking Usyk out, emphasizing Usyk's unbeaten record and lack of vulnerabilities. McKenzie pointed out that Usyk had never shown weaknesses such as a poor gas tank, susceptibility to cuts, or the need to recover from knockdowns to secure victories, reinforcing his belief in Usyk's superiority. But Fury believes he has a good shot. He has previously stated that he learned from his first fight with Usyk and believes he did well against him. Fury has no intention of removing his father John from his corner, recently sharing a photo of them putting in the effort together at the gym earlier this week. In an attempt to atone for his loss in May, the British player also maintains that the shackles are off. Fury said, Last time I went to box him, I was being cautious. I boxed the head right off him. Let's talk facts. Anyone can get caught, as we've seen in a lot of these heavyweight fights, but this time I'm not going for a points decision. I'm going to knock him out. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos.